Today, I'm gonna build a budget portable mini gaming setup with a couple of problems. The first one is, is quite predictable. I'm sure a bunch of you have guessed it. Uh, but the second problem is more general of the form factor. But before we get into that, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor, Today's video is sponsored by Linode, which is a powerful and easy to use Linux based web hosting service that's currently the top rated infrastructure as service provider on G2. Very impressive. Linode also has an extensive marketplace of fully configured one-click apps for whatever use case you need Linux-based web servers for. Be it WordPress development, file hosting, database management, video hosting, or even games servers, Linode has you covered. Other than that, if you have a heavy computational load, Linode is an affordable and easily scalable option. Linode is also in the process of implementing Google Pay, which will make your monthly payments more seamless. If all of this sounds good to you, sign up to Linode using the link in my description below to get a $100 60-day credit. Before we assemble our problematic budget portable gaming setup, let me quickly walk you through the components that I'm going to use in this build, starting with this case, which is the awesome little Inwin B1 that's all sexy glass and it comes with a power supply built in. Now the system that we're going to use for it at its core is going to have a Ryzen 3 5300G, which is one of the first problems in this build, considering that you can only buy that APU with really annoying kind of useless OEM packaging that really pushes up the price. So the alternative that you have is to buy a 5600G, which you can buy without the annoying useless packaging. Uh, so it means that it's actually cheaper and a bit more powerful. Now, in terms of RAM, we are going to use 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM, not 3600 megahertz, because this is a budget setup. Now, moving over to the display, we have this awesome bit of portable gamer tech. It is a 15 inch display that has an IPS panel in it with a 240 hertz refresh rate. It's pretty wild. Uh, the biggest problem with it, though, is that the 5300G is probably not going to be able to drive games at 240 frames per second, so uh, we are wasting most of what makes this thing special. Oh, and the other pretty big problem with it is that it's not budget by any stretch of the imagination. It costs $400. Anyway, moving over to the keyboard, I'm using the smallest keyboard that I own, which is this Corsair K65 Mini. It is a 60% keyboard, which is perfect for people who hate arrow keys. And then finally, we have the mouse, which is a Corsair M65 Pro, because it's one of my favorite mouse shapes of all time. This one has, has quite a lot of wear on it because I, I use it a lot. I really like this mouse. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the setup. So with that, let's get into a suspiciously jovial build sequence. Ah! Ooh, I... I really hope that this cooler fits in that case. Ugh. Damn you Asus and your fancy modern motherboards that don't have integrated rear IO shields. Oh, that actually wasn't, wasn't too bad. Well, I don't know, hopefully that'll be okay. Hopefully the thermals aren't atrocious. This little in-win case is the first non-NZXT chassis I've seen where the front panel connectors are a just chad fat connector like this one as opposed to those little annoying loser connectors. Good good job in-win. Oh, this is such a cute little gaming PC. I can't wait to take advantage of its portability.
Uh, excuse me, I'll have a pumpkin frappuccino latte, please. Macchiato. We're not getting video out. Obviously, I'm not getting video out. It's not plugged in. <laughs> Wow, that, that looks like a bit of a struggle. Mind your own damn business. Now obviously that use case is really stupid. The main benefit of this PC's small size is definitely not portability. I think the main reason that you'd build a system like this is to use as like an HD PC or as a pretty powerful little emulation device. I've actually done a video on that use case with this case before. Uh, I'll have it linked in the description below, you can go check it out. Uh, but yeah, the whole, the whole portability thing is really dumb. And I think building a setup like this and using it in a coffee shop is probably the fastest way to get yourself banished to the local leper colony uh, because you can buy a laptop for probably less money than this setup with significantly more powerful hardware in it and it's also much less likely to get you banished. Uh, so with that, uh, let, let's see how it performs in terms of gaming. Ooh, we're starting with GTA 5 and this is a, a pretty crisp display. Uh, it's got 240 hertz, which is definitely going to be wasted on this 5300G. This is definitely a better gaming experience than you got with the uh, UHD 770 and the new Intel GPUs. Yo, AMD, AMD just embarrasses Intel in terms of iGPUs because, you know, the 5300G has like one of the more baby AMD iGPUs in it at the moment and... This is handily beating the UHD 770. And this display actually looks really good. This is, this is awesome. Temperatures are also well under control. Oh yeah, very impressive stuff, little mini PC. Uh, I'm just gonna not compare it to a laptop. But anyway, let's, let's move on to the next game. Ooh, this display feels really good. This is like a, this feels like a high-end laptop display. Uh, CSGO is running very well at 1080p low settings. Uh, often with systems running CSGO in about 120-ish frames per second, you have quite a lot of input lag feel. But this, aside from the occasional bit of stuttering, this is a... Oh, oh, this is a pretty good gaming experience. Like, you could, you could conceivably use this to, to game online. Like, this is... This is awesome. Well done, little Vega 3. Okay, well, Doom Eternal has launched. I actually couldn't get it running at all on the UHD 770. Um, it's not doing great here. It is at 1080p, uh, but it is all low settings. Let's try 720p to see if that's more playable. Yo, I don't even think we need to go down to 720p. I think 1600 by 900 maybe. Oh wow, that's definitely better. So now we're running at 1600 by 900. So not a huge resolution drop. And you know, we, we're still not hitting a solid 60 frames per second, but this is definitely playable. Like, yeah, this, this is a reasonable Doom Eternal gaming experience. And it actually looks pretty good too. Uh, but let's try something even more demanding. That's interesting. Uh, we seem to be getting close to the CPU section of the APU's limit, which I always love seeing that. I think it's hilarious when an iGPU can outperform the CPU that it's attached to. It's not quite happening here, but it's it's pretty close. Uh, other than that, though, it, this is good. Oh, uh, 720p, low settings, and it's just good. Such a shame that you can't buy it in any other form than in OEM crap box. That's that's just that's just such a disappointment. So at the end of the day, the main problems with this portable budget gaming setup is that it's not particularly portable. It's actually quite expensive. You can also buy significantly more powerful hardware that's more portable for about the same amount of money. And even if you wanted to, you, you can't buy like a bunch of the core components in, in the setup. Um, yeah, so I think this video helped a lot of people. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.